You are watching Access the Port County Channel 97. Coming up next is the March 6th meeting of the Michigan City Common Council Workshop. You can find more information for this meeting at www.accesstheportcounty.org. All right, this is a joint workshop for um, the city council and the administration on uh, finance. We want to make sure that all the new council members receive their uh, their binder and then updated um, the uh, seasoned council members with the information that they needed as well. And the purpose of the meeting is really to kind of uh, help you understand what the budget is, but also give you an update on how we ended last year, and then um, projected revenues and some other things. We have an agenda. Um, we have the 2023 year end recap we're gonna cover, and the year end cash balance where we were, and then 2024 we're gonna go over the budget, um, and then talk about the 2024 budget performance report, and um, spend a little time there and then talk about capital projects and the riverboat and then budget preparation for next year's budget um, and then open it up but this is meant to be interactive so if there's questions along the way this is the time to do it i'm sure there are going to be more questions afterwards um, as we move through this but we want to make sure as we get to the budget cycle that you have the information that you need um, i will um, share that um, we successfully turned in our our annual report was due last week and um, so they were working a lot of weekends to get some things done that's why we had to push this out until this time frame um, to to make sure that we could spend the time and not be focusing on something else versus the budget um, and while um, Mr. Smith is, uh, Tomiko is passing these things out. Um, one thing I will share, the reason, um, another reason why I wanted us to have this meeting um, is because projected revenues, the, and just, I'm just gonna give you a high level perspective. Um, the riverboat money that we've been receiving has been declining, declining for several years now. Um, you know, when I was on the council back in 2008, um, that council, we were very concerned about um, the use of riverboat funds for operational purposes because um, the percentages had skyrocketed um, and putting those controls in. And then another council put in a ready day fund, but we weren't funding it. The last council with Don and I and Brian and Tracy, then we began funding the rainy day fund. Well, what has happened, um, and you will see as we present, is that we have never cut our expenses, really. We've always continued to project as if we were pre-COVID, COVID, um, and not cut back on expenses or cut back on the revenues that we projected. And thus, we um, are in this space where, you know, I've already told the department heads that I don't plan to budget capital projects for next year. So I want to make sure that everybody's on the same page when we start talking about the finance and, and what the riverboat. And, and none of that, the blue chip is doing, doing well and they're vibrant um, in other areas. They've learned that they have to really figure out who they're who they going to be with competition because you got South Bend, you have um, Lake County, they're competing with multiple gaming institutions. So. Um, they've done a good job in promoting conventions, and, but that's not helping our bottom line. Um, so that impacts us dramatically. And now it's going to be on us, myself as administration, that I put forth a conservative budget over the next couple of years to make sure that, number one, um, we don't spend every dime that we get on operations, number one and that we start utilizing the riverboat for the intended purposes of doing development and projects in the community and in the neighborhoods. We don't really have a shiny object that we can point to for the riverboat. Riverboat has been existing over 25 years and what can we like, truly say that, man, this money has done this, this, and this. 
And so we are, are in the beginning of that, that we have to figure out what we're going to do differently as a city to make that happen. And it's my responsibility to, to give you the information and to get your support on things that I know we have to have, but then pull back in, a, in other areas. So um, who is going to start? You, Marilyn? So I'm turning it over right. to now, just a real quick question, Mayor, mm -hmm. and this is the I know the answer because we've been doing this for so long, but it'd be a question you can clear up, for, especially for the new ones. You said that the casino is doing well, but that's not helping us. Could you explain how we're funded versus, you know? Yeah, so, so we have contractual language, and, and Amber would probably know more about that, but it's based on gaming wagers and that. So. We don't get money from the, the, the restaurants, the conventions, all that. And they're doing well in the area because they, they had to reinvent themselves yeah. after COVID. Yeah. And um, so, you know, it's based on those people going in on the floor and spending their money and slots and table and all that. <coughs> but, um, but now, because they have heavier competition, those monies have been declining over the years. And that's kind of where, where we are now. So, but that Actually, being said, real quick too, yes. though, when Blue Chip originally opened and those agreements were made, there were no other Casino. casinos. And once uh, Four Winds and the other ones started opening, it was in the contract that our percentages would change when there were other uh, competitors. Mm -hmm. So, we'll so it all that. it all impacts us. So, I'll turn it over to our controller, Mary Lynn Wall. Hello. So um, on your agenda, you can see where, um, and I don't think I had to add on here. So we submitted the end report at 6 p.m. on Thursday. <laughs> this is we got it done. Um, so we got it, and part of the output of the annual report is our ending cash balance. Okay, and we, along with this, with uh, with 25 other reports. So this is just this was just part of the annual report. But I think it's really important that, as the mayor even alluded to, cash balances are something that I, I believe we've not always monitored as we go along. Because you can say, department heads can say within your budget, but if, your re if our revenues aren't coming in as projected, we can still have mm -hmm. the fund to go negative. And actually that happened last year in the MDH fund. Yeah. And so we had to move some expenses to, to alleviate um, the MBH fund because of the fact that revenue is didn't come in as projected. So we've got to not only watch our expenses, but our revenues also. Yeah, and, I, and I've shared that with, um, I'm, I've been doing one-on-ones with all of the department heads. And what I've shared with them, I, I go over their budget. And we talk through what's in their budget. And I say, they tell me what they have. And I say, well, for instance, today, I went over some seasonal workers and they hired. I said, well, you got five, this is how many you have, this is how many hours they can work, and then you're gonna run out of hours. Oh, they, and, and they just think that they can work 40 hours a week until they need them. I'm like, no, your budget says this. Let me do the calculation for you. They only can work this many hours. And showing the department heads what they can spend is, is important, but also letting them know hey, this is based on projected revenues. So we're monitoring that with the yeah. department heads. And I told them once a quarter, we're going to go over it. You know, there might be some tightening of different things. Don't just go spend your money. Just because it's in the budget don't mean you have the money yet. So I think the first um, sheet was this cash in. And this is, this is actually from we need more. Okay. from our annual report. And so, I also, so you guys are looking at the first one. So. At the cash, at cash investment. OK, so that's our cash balances. I also kind of wanted to know how many funds we have and we're responsible for. 90. Just so that you know. A lot of these funds we don't budget. Um, and so I tried to go through what we submit to the DLGF, and that's what the, that's what the X's are for. These are the funds that we actually budget, and you will be approving, the council will be approving um, through our budget process. But there's many more funds. A lot of them are, are, are donation funds, non-reverting funds, and so forth. So I just wanted to give you the complete listing of all of our funds. But this is not, this, this is not going to be what's included totally in your budget workbook, because 
the DLGF um, doesn't even monitor um, many of our funds. Most, probably, I would say most of our funds. So this is last year. Marilyn, can you explain what the DLGF is? Department of Local Government and Finance. Yeah. That's who we have, and there's actually a portal out there that is on is on Gateway that anyone can look and, and any of the residents can can look at our approved budgets and it's all in that transparency portal is, is for our budget so we have to submit our budget to the DLGF um, and we'll be doing that in October of this year and but then the prior administration and the prior council passed the budget that we're working from this year mm -hmm. I, um, so then we pr I printed out the actual resolution, and this is showing all the funds that the prior council actually approved. That's what this looks here. Okay, just a note. A, a, a note of was kind of interesting. I wanted to note. You look at the adopted tax levy for the general fund, twenty-four million dollars. That's before the property tax caps. We only received sixteen million. So just so that you realize, we do lose almost $9 million to the property tax caps. But we have to, but it's reported at this. But the actual, if you look at, um, we'll get there, when you look at your actual um, budget worksheet, well, the budget for property taxes is down to the $16 million. These funds are listed um, in the front page are, are the ones that are, are covered by the state board accounts. On the back, we have our home room funds. Those aren't reviewed by um, the DLGF, but we still run it through the budget process. Yes. And they're going to hear a term that will be tossed around during the budget. The difference between what we got and what we, the 24 and 16, that is the Circuit breaker. Circuit breaker, yes. And they're going to hear that a lot when yes, we start talking yes, about the budget. Yeah, when we talk about the, the circuit breaker, correct, correct. So you'll know when you hear it, right. what it actually means. So, so then we actually, so Tomiko ran the budget workbook that's very, very similar to what the council last year worked from when they when they reviewed our budget, reviewed the mayor's budget. This is, this is the 2024 budget. If you go... It's all, it, it, it's going to be listed by fund. The first fund on here is the general fund. And I want to show you that if you go to page 40, okay, if you go to page 40, you will see the total expenses for the general fund are 30 million. In your book. In your book. If you have a book that's in your book. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. And for those who are in your I'm sorry. In your <laughs> Any good one. Your book or your uh, update. So this is this is by funds, and this is how your your budget work work workbooks will be presented. And if you look, there's this, there's the same thirty million six hundred sixty three, which is the same as your adopted budget from last year. Okay. All of our funds will first, and I think I think maybe Dr. Corum, you might have even mentioned something last night. With each fund, we first list the revenues that support the fund in the workbook. So you can see for the general fund, here's the property taxes that are allocated to the general fund, the 16 million. Then we have. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, let's make sure we're. Are we on the page? Are we on this? 40 of 128. No, the budget, the budget book. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's not on page 40. No, it's on page one in the beginning. Wait, what's it? I don't have enough Oh, mine is not. Oh, okay. Oh, because they're my Yeah, mine is. Yours is from the original. Yeah, from the beginning. She said something about This is exactly. But you have now. That was just kind of explaining all that. I see. Okay. If you're on the actual page one of the general fund, yeah. it starts with revenues. Yes. Okay. So those are all the revenues that support the general fund. My so team won't the have, they won't see that. I don't think they have. They don't have a copy, do they? Who? Yes, they do. They have. They have. Everybody has a copy. Everybody okay. Has good. A copy. Okay, and then if you scroll through, if you keep on, then it starts into the expenses. And our general fund is departmentalized. 
So you, the council, will be approving a departmentalized budget, mm -hmm. meaning within the general fund, you have the city clerk, you've got the controller's office, you've got board of works, you've got vector. So those are all. That's why it goes general fund. Dot zero 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 is our revenues. All the revenues that post in the general fund help the entire general fund. And can I point so, something Carol out? Carol Bear? Yeah. So when you look at that, that first page and you look at general property taxes, and she talked about the $16 million for 2023, it was 15, 4, 4, 8, 15 million point four in 2023, mm -hmm. and then it was 14.787 in 2022. You know, so th these are the actual amounts that um, the revenue. The but for 2024, that's, that's, is that what we're receiving or projected? That's, that's still projected, but those are based on, they're pretty, the, the, the state gives us the numbers. <clears throat> All right. So those should be, yeah. those should, yes, after. That's why <clears throat> this has got 24 million. But we are only going to receive 16 million, and we're usually very close. Yeah. We'll get a distribution in June, and we'll get another distribution in December. Yeah. So we'll know, we'll cross our finger, yeah, when we get it, we'll get it in June. But it also depends on property tax on collections and stuff. But um, I'm pretty confident that we should at least get that get that amount. Um, but once again, this is where sometimes there's some misunderstanding, especially with departments. Any monies coming into the general fund support the entire general fund. It's not the revenues aren't aren't departmentalized, but your expenses are. Berlin, mm -hmm. well, can I ask a couple uh -huh. of questions here? In the general fund, uh, the first section, uh, it says uh, uh, local option tax, the state shared revenue, so local option tax, 3,530,000. Is that for uh, uh, for the police and fire and all No, that. no, that's in a separate, no, that's, separate that's public money. safety. That's public safety. That's a separate. totally separate fund. Okay. We have to put that in a public safety fund. We have to put that, that's that's just regular local option taxes that we can put into the general fund. Okay, all right. And this is coming through the county? Yes, there's state revenues that come through the county. Through the county, okay. Yep. And then the, the, there's other thing, the taxes in lieu of taxes, the utilities, 444,000, it's, it's like a pilot probably. Correct, uh, and correct. So is this from NIPSCO? No, I don't believe, um, who's paying those? That's so, not NIPSCO, that's, I'm not, I'll have okay. to look into that. Okay, that's but a we have an agreement. Amount, so that's we reasonable. used to get the silver birch, but the silver birch now is going to move to a different water. Oh, that's the water department, you're right. You're yeah. right, that is the water department. That's the water department. That's, that's the water, water department. department. Okay. So we make it, we have an agreement that they pay us. Okay. Correct. The other question I had was, like, when NIPSCO, the plant closes, uh, will that impact this general property taxes? Yes. Of course it will. Yes, it, will. It, it will, but that... I will say that's not a discussion for today, but that is a discussion Correct. that I've already started having. Okay. okay. All right. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yep. We just got regular licenses and permits. That's what we, we collect from um, from our um, our planning department and so forth. So we have a lot of miscellaneous revenues, but the most of our revenues do come from property taxes and other interlocal taxes. Right, then the next, the next, so the, the next section will start with the department actually expenses, which. Okay. Go to non-departmental. Actually, the controller's office on my book starts on page three yes. or five. What is it? Mm -hmm. What's the number? Page five. Page five. Oh. So just got, the revenues always are going to go first in any fund, and then once the revenues are finished, when the revenues are when we posted all the when we reported on all the revenues, then it starts with the expenses. And in the general fund, it's going to then go to each department. Marilyn, on the first page, I have another question. Mm -hmm. Licenses and permits, building permit, one million eight hundred thirty-two thousand. Mm -hmm. Can you can explain. I can explain that one. Uh -huh. All right. So yes. we have a couple of major projects. Okay. Sola. If you look down there, they're detailed. They're, they're detailed underneath. So what they do 
is if you see licenses and permits building, we look down below our regular building permits. We anticipate 232,000, okay. but from SOLA, 1.5 million okay. based on the total amount for that project, and then 100,000 from the new subdivision. Okay. So we break it down, you know, underneath, but. Um, our budgeting process allows us the tools. So if you ever look there, are, like contractual services, we ask each of our departments to detail those. Then if you if you look at any of, and we can do it for the revenues too, um, but mainly a lot of times we do that for the expenses. So if you flip over to, because uh, you'll see, uh, well, we go back to the um, permits, you'll see budget transactions. So we're allowed to put in budget transactions on most anything we want to. And so I think we felt like we wanted to split those out so someone knew why that number was so large. Thank you. You're welcome. For all the, um, for the, when you go to the, when you flip to the first department, which is the controller's department, um, page for the expenses on page five, that starts the expenses. Once again, you will see budget transactions. Okay, so if you look at the salaries and wages, we budgeted the 366,000. Then we have the breakdown of it, and all and all the employees and and their, and the um, gross pay. Not everything is obviously detailed out, so you'll see just the share of FICA is just a one line, PERF is just one line. So whenever you see things indented and seeing budget transactions, that's just because we're we're just providing more detail on that. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. But when you scroll through this, it's going to go through every department in the general fund. And all of the salaries and the, the, the regular salaries and wages will be detailed on the number of employees that are out there that are, that are in that department. Um, let's flip to central maintenance if you want to. What page is that? I'll show you. Page 17. Ma 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 Ma
and um, so we're we're working through that that process um, right now. But um, it takes time. You know, we looked at it as a county. Also, it takes some time, but it does uh, result in savings. Yes, yes, it does. So once again, this is every fund within this. So I, is there any other questions? And, and you'll get training more when it comes to budget time, and this will be able to go yeah. decipher this. But this is basically follows the same format for every fund. Yeah, and okay. just look at our the general fund. I just encourage you to spend some time with it. This is going. <laughs> That's where most of our and most yes. of the general fund is salaries and benefits. Just to let you know. Mm -hmm. So. Um, so once the budget, the budget's been approved, I also found, this was a question that, that Dr. Cora mentioned, and I just want to give this for information, I'm not going to go over it. Um, the uses of funds, um, it's in the color sheet here, just for your information. Resources and uses. This I found this on some training that State Board of Accounts gave. And on the back page of this, it also references where you can go for guidance on, and, and believe me, we have to sometimes reference this. I, I just got a call um, from someone, well, what can we use the local road street money for? We have to go to the State Board of Accounts and kind of look and see exactly what the uses are. And that's listed on the back here, so if anybody ever wants to kind of dig more into the the, the funds that are probably listed on your first page. For some of our home rule funds, they were probably established by ordinance. Those, you might have to look at the, you might have to request from the clerk's office or us to find the ordinance that established the fund, and then that should list the, the appropriate uses of that fund. Like a lot of our donation funds, like list on exactly what the use is for. But I just thought this was kind of useful, just for your information. You know, just a comment, on the last page, Roberto, Mayor was just saying that the two sources of the money coming in is admissions and wagering. Mm -hmm. So if the number of people coming goes down and the number of their wagering that goes down, then how does it turn style? Yeah, that's probably that turn style over yeah, there. Mm -hmm. right there. But they got plenty of people coming on the boat that's just going to gamble at yeah. fancy. Yeah. That, you know, going yeah. to gamble. Yeah. That's not admissions. That is not that's admissions. Yeah, that's, right. right. so we don't get, we don't, that's not been written in where we get a portion of that wagering. But I will say, I did meet, we did have a meeting of other local mayors that have um, casinos, and we talked through with AIM about legislation and um, things we should support, things we should fight. Um, so um, I have been participating with that group. Thank you. I believe we still have the budget performance report for just the general fund, correct? correct. So, so once everything's been approved and the council uses that budget worksheet to approve everything, we have an integrated system so that once again that adopted budget now is used for the department heads in what we like to call what we call the budget performance report. If you look at the total page, which will be the last page, because so this only is the general fund. There's that same thirty million six hundred and sixty-three thousand dollars that is the adopted budget. Can't stress enough, all the department heads must stay within their budget. And we might ask you to, to cut your budget if revenues aren't aren't coming in as expected. But work within your budget, hopefully we'll be okay. <laughs> the next column are budget amendments. We just passed ordinances um, both in Board of Works and, and, and the Council for encumbered funds. Those show up in the budget amendments. This may or may not have had, I think we might have had some in the, um, in the general fund. Because that's adding to the budget, because we're encumbering that money from the prior year. So that's added to the department's budget. First budget amendment, sorry. Uh, second column. Second column. I'm sorry, I was the first page. I'm just explaining what you report. Yeah. This is a tool for our department heads. Just trying to make sure. We have controls in place in our ledger that, and you might run into this in the last, especially in the last quarter of the year, can't validate a batch because it's going over budget. If that happens, call the controller's office. We will assist you on trying to figure out, well, can we transfer money? from another classification which would require a resolution from the council or we might have to ask for additional appropriation or we might work with well maybe we need to cut something from another we'll have to figure it out 
So that's why we've got to monitor and, and this, we'll go over the whole, all the columns when, we get, when I get to them. So the budget amendments will be encumbered funds first. I mean, not, not first, but those are the first things that roll into that budget amendments. Any transfers that might go through, whether they're um, major transfers through resolution or minor transfers. Additional appropriations will also show up in this column. So for instance, we just passed the park it's not on here yet when this isn't even the park budget, I mean the golf budget, you will see that amount going into the budget for the amount that the council additionally appropriated for the golf. So the department head will have that additional money in the budget. Then we just have the um, amended budget, it's just those, those columns added. Current month transactions, current month transactions. Year-to-date encumbrances will be any of, any of the department heads open purchase orders. Mm -hmm. So that, 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 that's encumbered money. We want to take that out of your budget because you've already obligated those funds. So that's why you've got year-to-date encumbrances. And then year-to-date transactions will be all the transactions that have posted, obviously year-to-date. Thing you want to watch for department heads is to see your budget balance and your percentage that you've used. If you start seeing that percentage get kind of high, please contact the controller's office and we'll try to mitigate the transfer of funds or try to figure out what we can do to help assist that. Because technically it should be 112th and then one six. you know, each sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. but, but then sometimes you, their contracts are all to Right, yeah. but if you show 50% in, <laughs> in March or April, something's wrong. Something's wrong. Well, right? for instance, we just had this happen now. Major snow. Right. Sean has got Sean has used up half of his contractual services already mm -hmm. because he had to go out. So we may have to we'll, we'll see. We right. monitor his budget because of those unexpected events that may need that we might need to just we'll worry about that later. Right now we're fine, but we I told Sean we'll be monitoring it. Yes. Okay. So that's the budget performance report. Yeah, Maryland profession. Mm -hmm. Revenue totals. Um, 30 million seven hundred five. So is this, you, you said that this is the number 24, but actually it's only 16 or something like that earlier. So is this the real amount? Well, this is just the budget performance report does not have, the, are you talking about the, the 30, 30 million 705? Yeah. Are the revenues expected for the general fund? Okay, that, yes. that's the revenues expected. Expected. Uh, after yes. that adjustment you talked about, it will be, Earlier you said that it was 24 and... No, this will have the 16 million in it. Yeah. So yeah. this will be actual monies that we're hoping to get. Okay. So the, the number used here is 16, correct? Yes, absolutely, okay. absolutely. Okay. And that's something else that we can monitor. And I know because, especially the general fund, everything's departmentalized, it's really, it's really my office that will be looking at the monies coming in to the general fund. Because... It's the general funds. You're just oh, it's, it's all of the funds. It's all of all of those. Um, Marilyn, I'm sorry. Can I, I think, go back to? I think that's the so the property tax was 24 million before the levy. I'm just starting at the top. Oh, correct. And then we had like eight, eight, eight million or so. Circuit breaker. Correct. Circuit breaker. Circuit breaker. So we got 16 million. Uh huh. So that's 16 million is included in this 30 million 705. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what else makes up? To set thirty million seven oh five. That's, that's the rest all. of the that's all. That's all. That's all. All the rest of the other funds that are that were listed in the revenues on the on the beginning. Yeah, does this, the does the this include river boat money also? That no. 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 no, no, that is no. not. It's just a general river boat. It's a separate fund. It's a separate fund. Okay. okay, so if you go to back to your budget, your your actual budget workbook, you will see the thirty million seven oh five. The total of the general fund on page forty. Right. So yeah, so that's the 16 million. That's all of these things that were listed up here as possible, even including the the, the, the permit, the money from the permits. Yes, yeah, that's all the permits, all the revenues, and everything, everything, everything we can get. Correct. But the budget performance report mainly is a tool for our department heads, so they're just looking at their expenses. Okay. Right. So yeah. Yep. Yep. So are we good? Yeah. For now. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Now we're working about now. You can go into the um, the toy. So part of so this is so this is the 2024 budget. Once again, department heads, you got the same thing. Your budget <laughs> included in the 2024 budget were riverboat capital items. 
I actually gave to you so that everyone realized. And I also think it's important for department heads and council to see the actual worksheet that we provide to the, to, um, the LGF. That is, that's this. This one first. So they see the original. Correct. This is the original. I gave you all. And so this is this is actually what we what we give to what we have to um, fill out for the DLGF. The budget estimate. The budget estimate. So this one is just Riverboat, and I just printed off Riverboat. We have to do this for every fund. So we do this for every, every fund that's in the budget. That's in the that's in the budget we submit. So okay. And I know from um, from our, our seasoned council people, we know that we always say, and this is where it's, we always have to start with the actual June 30th balance. So that's why we really have to wait until we reconcile our June 30th balance, because that's a solid number. Okay? So. We have to wait till all the revenues, everybody's got everything posted, everything's in, and we reconcile. So that's why it's really tough for us to get this before August, July, August. Yeah. So that, that's the start of it. Okay. So we have Riverboat and we have the Boyd Development. So there's two funds. That we right. But, but, I, but I just want you to look at the Riverboat one because you also have another sheet that the the first one, the first this one here, is what we submitted for the budget, which is um, a projection. So what Maryland has gone in and done on the next sheet that is also has riverboat, but it's horizontal and it's got red numbers on the side of it. That's going to actually show you what the actual work. It's this one going this way, and it, it says riverboat at the top. So when everybody can clearly so we aware just took a copy of this form and then made some columns next to it, so we can she can explain yeah. Yeah, it's not the effect. Yeah, so you start with the June thirtieth balance. Okay, so if you look and realize we were submitting this in September of last year, so 2023 has not fully occurred yet. So when we were submitting this, we had to put in estimated revenues July through December of 2023 which we'll have to be doing this for 2025. We, we projected $6,883,000 of revenues. We only received $3,328,000. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yes. yes. So now, based on that sheet that I've referred, we just sent off to um, State Board of Accounts, I know what the actual cash balance is of the river boat. We projected in our budget Five million eight hundred and seventy nine dollars, eight hundred and seventy nine thousand, as our cash balance at the end of the year. At the end of the year, actual was three million six hundred and one thousand five hundred and thirty one, and that's a solid number. And that's what we reported on our annual report. So we're yeah, down to why, why is the discrepancy? Because we got less revenues. No, because we projected we over we over projected more revenues. Project. We should not have projected. Six million dollars in revenues. Mistake. So I, I have a couple of questions. Um, you know, Councilman Tillman always talks when he presents a finance report. He mentions one and then he says ETF. So oh, that's an EFT. EFT. Yeah. All that is is a method of payment. It's it really trans does funds transfer. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. It's just crap. So, so let me add a couple of things to um, to comments to that. Um, and and we we didn't review this in the budget. They all have them look at their um, riverboat funds. So um, so there was an over projection of the riverboat funds. But again. Um, our council did pass, the last council passed a resolution for rainy day fines, right? So, thank you, that's what I mean. So, um, the, this is what's interesting. So, we the actual amount for 2022 for riverboat funds was 3834000 2023 was 3487000 But for some reason, uh, the last administration projected six million three hundred three thousand. Perhaps. So um, you will see that also in our Boyd Development Fund that we over projected. 
in the last several years in our void development fund. Uh, in previous years, pre-COVID, we were getting over $456,000 a year. Uh, three of the four last years, we've only received $50,000. So again, over projecting revenues based on pre-COVID. So the reason why I wanted to have this workshop, I need you all to understand where we are. Uh, I'm not setting off alarm bells because I think we, there's some things we can do as an administration to work through it. Uh, but you need to understand, so when I say we, we're not gonna um, put capital into the the um, next year's budget and when I say that for this year we're going to need the rainy day fund because we over projected by three million dollars mm -hmm. this is why it's not because of because um, um, I believe me I don't like spending riverboat money on operations and, and my intent is that we're going to cut back on that but in the meantime we have to be lean and mean this year and next year and um, the way this budget was projected was based on using rainy day funds, in my opinion. I think that's where it came from. Yeah, I, I think unfortunately, I two things. Um, I think we always had that nine, ten million dollar. I think, I think, I think um, you might have even mentioned that. Um, yeah. Yeah, that that that's always been the number like oh for riverboat we've always put that in there and I think we've always done the budget and I, and I really think that was accidentally done that that same number was put in there forgetting that every time we get riverboat distributions I take 25 percent <clears throat> of it off the top and put it, it in the rainy, rainy day. day so in truly and 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 so, and we, so we are receiving nine. Well, we received eight, eight like, point something. Yes, I ran a report. Because we took the rainy day off the top. Correct. The total rainy day mm -hmm. and river vote that we received in 2023 was 8.1 million. Mm -hmm. okay. Which is probably lower than what we've received. I think we used to receive closer to 10. Yeah. I'd have to do some analysis. I didn't. I just ran what we got last year. But mm -hmm. that's rainy day and river vote, which still is the same money is coming in. It's wagering and it's ambitions. We just take 25% of it and, and put it to the rainy day fund. Yep. So if I'm reading this right, we're already projecting that we're going to be over 600000 in the red at the end of the year, and that'll come off of rainy day? Well, it, that's only if, see, we projected $10 million of expenses this year on the, sec, on the bottom half of this worksheet. We have told the department has hold, hold, this one. The sideways one. The sideways, the sideways one. one. The sideways one. It's um, probably the same on both of them, but the sideways one. Yeah. Um, right now, there are some riverboat um, expenditures that we had to make. We had to pay our ESG. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a contractual obligation. Um, there, the NERPSI payment was a was a, was an obligation we had to pay. Um, and we've already committed to um, some phases in the CCMG and we really are utilizing, um, it's gonna cost us so so much less to get some park projects done from what Shannon had projected. So we do have we some some riverboat money that we know we really need to spend and then we've told the department heads, nope, you can't go out and buy that tractor right now. We can't go out, Shannon, you can't go out and buy your golf carts. We have to prioritize and then we will probably look at the rainy day if we decide and the council decides that okay these are needed expenditures we can you know we'll ask for a rainy day um, but that's only that's six that would be if we truly spent the whole 10 million but we're not going to that's why we found because I found where we over budgeted the revenue so we put a halt to Riverboat spending this year in the 2024 budget, except for what was okay. So contractually since you did that, this is not 600,000 in the red. No, it would, uh, yeah, only if we spend. I'm just only if we only do. if we and okay. yes, correct, absolutely, absolutely. <clears throat> but even if you if you didn't, we're, we're only looking at going into rainy day for 600,000 or more. Assuming a zero at the end. That's, so let me let me make sure. Let me say this this way. So for budget um, year twenty twenty four, if you look at, I want to look at the actual line numbers. So at line number fourteen, 
and says nine million six hundred six hundred ninety-two thousand five hundred five hundred sixteen dollars. But with our revised amount, we're talking about only six million. And that's based on last year's numbers. I did not decrease it. So it may not be this, once again, this is 2024 numbers that we've only gotten two distributions so far. So this, I went ahead and plugged in this last year's numbers, okay. just to have a baseline. Yeah. Yeah. But the overall, the overall red number that caused me concern was the, um, that we over budgeted based on numbers and the projected revenues, 2.27 million. Mm -hmm, that's correct. So that's why, um, I, you know, I sh shared with the uh, department heads that <clears throat> the riverboat is important that we monitor their spending. If there's anything we can pull back that we won't um, budget for capital, we'll always bring that to the council, hopefully with a plan. Mm -hmm. I've shared with them, you know, we need to look for funds and opportunities that we can either um, piggyback with something that's happening, whether it's a project, a nursing project, or a grant, or something, um, so that we can do that. Um, but <clears throat> this is kind of where we're at. Um, and right now, we're just monitoring it. And Boyd, only because um, that fund has a large cash balance, it's not affecting this year's budget. But we will have to look at where we we might have to we have to transfer those expenses that we normally would have paid out of board to a to a different fund because we're only going to get fifty thousand dollars a year. Yeah. Where we used to get four hundred. Yeah, and I did reach out to Blue Chip because I thought it was a mistake. That's what we were hoping. I um I reached out and I said, hey, I think we're missing a decimal. I tried, I tried, but um, so so what I will say though is that we will make sure we do a better job. We will probably do this again prior to the budget oh, absolutely. process. We'll do this again so that you know where we're at at kind of midway through the year, so that we can give you an update and kind of share, you know, what's happened or what's changed before we start the budget process. We'll do this another time. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Can you, can I ask, may I ask for clarification on the difference between Riverboat and Boyd? Oh, that was my question. The difference between those two funds, Riverboat, Boyd. That comes, starts from the first agreement. And, I yeah. and that's where the enrichment corporation money comes from. Yeah. From Boyd? From, yeah. Yeah. From yes. Boyd. Okay. Boyd. Okay. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Thank you. That's so so they part. have to meet a certain threshold to trigger additional monies, the minimum, if they don't meet that minimum threshold, we get at least $50,000. So last year we brought only fifty. This yes. year, yeah. So this, this technically, year, Boyd's year. only supposed to be used oh, for economic yeah. development mm -hmm. projects where Riverboat can be used for anything. Yeah. Yeah. That's the difference. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. In December fund. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Angie, if I may, mm -hmm. I'd like to make a comment now instead of waiting until the end. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of waiting until before the budget process to enlighten the council on where we stand on the budget, we have like a semi-annual update, you know, another workshop like this. And That's what I just said. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you didn't say semi-annual, you said before the budget process. I said midway, I said a few couple of months, halfway through the year. Oh, okay. yeah, yes. All right, we'll right. June 30th. Yes. Yeah. 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 So we we'll do this again June before we start the budget. Yeah, now. With, with the department heads, maybe I'm fast forwarding this, but, and I appreciate Mr. Garbacic being here, a department head, but have all the other department heads heard the same? Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. In our staff meetings. Yeah. yeah. And do they have to, will they go over their budget, like quarterly or whatever, with the controllers? It should to be make sure it seems a lot. Yeah. So, so what, what we're doing right now, so, um, I talk about it at each staff meeting. We've had three, and um, and we're doing it in one on ones right now with me, and then um, just making sure. And then I'm have, encouraging them to spend time because they, those are the questions I'm asking them before they spend money. Like today, I, like I said, I went through an exercise with one of the, with um, one of the department heads about seasonal employees, and I said, hey, 
this is it right here. This is all you got right here. How many hours is that? You know, and so we went through the process and I said, well, you want them to work now, we're going to have to let them go in August, you know, and I had to explain. So this is how many hours you got per employee. So if you want them here till this time period, you're going to have to cut their hours now since they're seasonal down to 32 hours a week and just showing them. And I think it's more of a, a learning. Nobody's really covered that with anybody. So when I'm having one-on-ones and we talk through their budget, I'm like, okay, this is what this is. This is how you look at this. This is how you look at Riverboat. And, um, and then at every staff meeting, we talk budget. I mentioned something. But we're going to do a similar workshop like this just for the department heads and their deputies yeah. so that they can understand yeah. it. But every single one, I'm like, hey, you need to... You know, you need to understand that's a projected revenue. That doesn't mean you have it. And I think that's the 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 misconception. You know, that they just thought, hey, it's in the budget. I can spend it. Oh, sure. And I said, you know, by September 1, I'm going to let you know for real what you, what you, what you have. <laughs> but if I see an anomaly, because that was the, the, the cool thing. So as soon as Mary Lynn um, caught, she said, hey, you need to see this. <laughs> You know, this is early on, so I was like, what? What now? <laughs> and so, um, but I'm like, this is not something we can get through. It, I'm not worried about it from that standpoint. It's not a dire thing. I'll just have to come back to the council and say, this is what it is. Yeah, we, we need part of the rainy day money to get through this for this year and maybe next year as I start decreasing things. But also, no, um, we're doing a revenue uh, study on our fees on what fees need to be increased, you know, is there a way for us to um, consolidate different fees we have? We have a lot of things out there that it's just been that way. Right. So, um, and, and, and looking at it, just a broad stroke, I haven't really gone through the whole thing. Looking at our neighbors, I mean, we charge, we haven't increased our fees and our neighbors charge way more than we do. <clears throat> so. I think once we do that, that will help us too. Yeah, well, I just got to say, you know, I'm glad that you're bringing this out now. Well, since I've been on the council, we've been through this, and I believe, Brian, we've been through this twice already. Once with the Mayor administration, now with the Perry administration. A new person comes into office, we're $3 million in a hole, or we're $4 million in a hole. And these are the reasons, you know, when you came in on the last council, same thing. Money, we're in the hole. We're in the hole. Why are we in the hole? We're the people that sign the budgets. Nobody tells us a thing until at the end of the year or the 5th of the January. Oh, by the way, we're $3 million in the hole. Yeah. How'd that happen? And I think, so, yeah, and I, we got to get I, that I agree practice. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think some of the I'm, practices, I'm of and that. some of the practices, and I will tell you this the previous years tell you that we're not going to get that kind of money. Right. 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 You, would, you would think. But I think what has happened over time, we'll ask every department what they want and just put it in the budget and make the revenues make the match. Revenue yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, yeah. that's my impression. <laughs> Backwards budgeting. Right. And my, my thing is, tell me what our projected revenues are and then we'll back our budget into it versus the opposite. And I think that's, that's the problem that, that if, if I can kind of say too, though, yeah. we all have to really be honest with the fact that this last administration, this cycle, the council, the mayor, you know, all of that was contentious. So there were decisions made to not cut to make the council. I mean, it was political things being done that led us this way, but ultimately we always budget to spend all of our revenue. And I don't know, I don't run my house like that. I don't think y'all do either. But right. that's what we have done historically. Although we give 10 million, let's spend 10 million. Right. And, and when it's not really 10 million. It's though. correct, correct. And they never made the adjustment for it. So I think that for me, this is my third administration. And this is the most kumbaya the council and the mayor has been to even have these conversations without it being accusatory, you know what I mean, or pointing finger. It's like open dialogue. So I feel like if we can continue this, and I know Mary Lynn agrees, 
to have these open dialogues, we won't be in this. We won't be in this. Yeah. And, and we need to better use the tools we have. Right, I think I've talked to Tomiko before about how we used to do the budget. And I think, and I think that's part of part of the issue. So used to doing the budget, the kind of the old way, where you used to just look at the expenses and create these Excel spreadsheets with just the expenses. And then when you run it through this Form 4B, as long as their fund doesn't go negative, we're okay. Now we have New World, and if you look at your budget, you look at that, you look at that total page with any fund will tell you total expenses, total revenues. Yeah. And there's times when total expenses are more than total revenues. That's, That's a problem. Right. Now, in Riverboat, sometimes that makes sense. Let's say we're buying a fire truck, one time hit. We've right. saved up enough money to buy the fire truck. Oh, okay. That's why we're going into our cash balance because we've saved money for that. That's not going to be a reoccurring per, per, that's not going to be a reoccurring thing. But for our operating, we can't have that because the most of, once again, especially the general fund, most of these are salaries. So that's going to be reoccurring and if not, hopefully going up every year. Um, so, but that's that's kind of where I'm at with the budget performance report. So this is this puts us this puts us at the end of 2024. Once again, for department heads, if you see see if you please if you see problems with your budget, come to us early. Um, if I see problems with your revenues, well, I may have. So I'll, I'll, be and I'll, come to you. I'll be monitoring the general fund revenue. So that might be something that you won't see, fire. You won't see. Because the general fund revenues are supporting everybody. Yep. Did we get our problem fixed? Get what? Did our problem fixed with the fire department? Which problem is that? About the allocation of the money for the vehicle. I think, uh. Oh, uh, vehicle you are purchasing? You are purchasing the vehicle? Yeah, that one day we'll get it. Uh, oh, yes, yes, oh, absolutely. You mean that? Yeah, yes, 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 absolutely. We figured that. Yeah, yeah. We were allowed to, to take some money from the CCD. Yep. That was going to be my question. That you brought it up the fire the concern of fire truck purchase. That's what I remember from when I was on council before. You can cut back on capital projects, although people don't like to, but capital expenditures back then, I'm sure that's true now, are huge for the fire department, <laughs> police also, but more so for the fire department. Right. Is there a plan in place to budget for that on a regular basis? Because those they yeah. pretty much come up on a regular well, basis. One of the things that we want to do, but we got to get to this, yeah. is, to keep, is to create a capital um, improvement plan. And so that way we can put, set aside a certain amount each year versus, oh, we need a new garbage truck or, oh, we need a new this. Because that's what's been happening. And so um, we haven't come back to, to I'll use refuse for now as an example. We haven't come back to it. And people may not want to hear, hear, even hear this, um, but I mean, the refuse um, department, those vehicles are expensive. We don't have like a, a fund where, um, you know, we, we give away a lot. We don't charge for, for a while, we didn't charge for pickups. You know, we didn't charge for this. We don't find people for trash. We're going to go back come back with the new council and start talk, having those discussions again. Because right now, um, um, Brett Kelly, who's the vector control, they're like um, keeping track of the, the, the weight of everything they're picking up, all the trash they're picking up, um, just, just off of properties, right? And we hadn't done that before. I was like, hey, people need to understand what y'all do and how much trash y'all pick, pick up weekly. <coughs> And I said, but somebody can put out dump stuff three, four, five, six, seven times a year, and we need to charge. And so we need to get that on the book sooner than later. That's going to be coming back to the council. We need to charge for that. Um, people have more than one tote. They have two, three, four, five, six totes. Mm -hmm. They don't get charged for them. Mm -hmm. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, those are things that we're going to look at. And people will say, well, I said, well, I'm looking for revenues. If you want to provide, if we're going to provide services to the community, it's a cost to it. It's not included in this tax cap. We have a circuit breaker system in the state. All that money we use to cover all those services, we're taking, they're taking from us right off the top. 
That money's gone. Nine, what, six million dollars? Eight, eight. eight million dollars taken from us right off the top. So we have to go find the revenues now. And the revenues are if we want to provide a service like that, we have to charge for certain services and and um, look at what's um, comparable because every community outside of Michigan, they're charging. Mm -hmm. okay. We're not. So we're still probably going to be cheaper than everybody, mm -hmm. even when we start. Um, but it's going to be different when people have never paid anything <laughs> for it. So that's that's going to be something coming to the council. Yes, Dr. Yeah, if I could, uh, Tim, in, in reference to that question you know, about fire trucks. So, and I give the credit to uh, the last administration in the fire department, they put together, by the request of the city council, they put together a truck committee. Mm -hmm. They went back and they studied the age of the fire truck fleet. They came back with the recommendations on you know, what they needed now, because I think we bought three fire trucks, right? Yeah, two or three. Two, two, but anyway, two, two. yeah, it was, it was a lot. It was a lot, it was a lot of money. But now, they actually have a schedule of when a certain truck, I think there's 10 years on a fire truck. 10 years on a fire truck. Yeah. Correct? Yes. Yeah, all right. So we know 10 years from now, truck number 22 has got to be replaced. And truck 14, 15, you know, whatever the time period is, but there's a schedule <laughs> now that makes sense instead of coming to the council and go, hey, we need two fire trucks. We need 20, 200 or $2.5 million. Okay, where are we going to get that? If we didn't have, I'm telling you guys, if we didn't have that ARPA money yep. to get us through last year, this city would be in dire straits. Nope. I'm not saying we'd be bankrupt, but we would be in bad, bad financial shape. Yep. So, yep. yeah. Anyway, I just wanted to tell you that. I, well, I know, I'm glad that's still in place. One other thing, though, on this trash thing, and it takes me back to yesterday at our meeting. We had a lot of people that came up and talked about trash in the city and how big a big a problem it is. I think we all agree with that. But at the end of the meeting, uh, I had to stay to sign some ordinances. A lady came up to me and told me, you know what's going on in a lot of our communities. Because it's so expensive to have trash picked up in the surrounding area, the you know, dumping people dumping. are driving down the alleys and dumping it into our citizens' cans that are in the alley. Then they come out, they got no place to put their trash, they put it by the trash, mm -hmm. and then they get yelled at. So I, I don't know if that's mm -hmm. widespread or if a lot of people are doing that. Wow, I've never Maybe, heard that. But somebody needs to look into that because she said it's widespread on the alleys. Well, I will say we're, we're starting a pilot on a couple of streets um, to move them from the alleys to the front. To the, to the curb. Um, our goal, you know, is to, to figure out a way to, to get out of the alleys. Because quite frankly, when the storm happened, that's very problematic for us to clear those alleyways. And um, it just caused a lot of, of problems. And, I, and so um, I know that Chris Carter is looking at a couple of streets to, to pilot some areas to see if we can move from alleys to the, to the farm. I think that would help. The so. residents have to find somewhere to put their cans so that they're not easily accessible to somebody driving by. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you. So I think that, so we, we kind of went over 2024. Department heads, they have the 2024 budget um, performance report, and we'll quickly be going into the 2025. This is program for department heads. Your 2025 budget will be out. There'll be training for this, so don't worry, because um, it's all it's all an integrated system. So we are able to take the 2024 adopted budget. We will actually populate your 2025 budget with those numbers. That seems to be what all the department heads like. So they don't have to start from scratch. Then it'll be up to department heads to review that budget, make adjustments where needed. We'll show you how you can run. I mean, we usually actually prepare a budget worksheet for you then you can we'll, we'll give you training on how to run it we'll show you we'll be able to throw out your actual numbers for the last three years um you'll be able to monitor and then you will actually go out there and and and, and put in your 2025 budget 
Then, um, I, what, what, like I said before, once we get June, we'll have to start balancing the budget. We'll probably have to make some cuts to your budget. Um, but that'll all happen. That'll all that'll happen late in the summer. Actually, the departments can kind of start their, their work earlier. Um, right. I'll probably could even do it now. I mean, I could take the 2024 budget and draw it into 2025. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then training should also be provided for the council um, to go over the actual budgeting process and, and the workshops that, that will be that will be scheduled. Um, this is very similar to the books we'll be providing. Um, like I said, my hope was today that really dissecting the 2024 budget and I think seeing seeing the actual forms that we fill out, I'm hoping that help will help you in preparing and, and approving the 2025 budget. Mm -hmm. Now I know even Tamiko said, well, we just want to keep this in mind here. We have no idea when the state board council is going to show up at our door That's true. for the audit. Keep that, keep that, keep that in mind. That takes up a lot of our time. And then we're getting the trifecta this year, trifecta this year. Okay. Um, every three years, um, the FTA comes in for a triannual transit audit. That's a big deal. That's happening this year. And HUD has now announced they're going to do an audit this year. So, Who's that? HUD for a CDG. Oh, HUD. Yep. Okay. They don't normally, normally a lot of times our HUD grant is looked at by the state board of accounts will actually um, bring a federal um, examiner to kind of look at our, our total federal, um, our federal dollars that we've received. And usually they pick one of our major, uh, major, major grants to actually audit. But like I said, this year we actually have HUD and the FTA actually doing their own audit this year, along with the state board accounts. So, wow. We're be busy. Mm -hmm. I have a few comments. First of all, Marilyn and Domingo, thank you for organizing this. Oh my God, this is a lot of stuff. <laughs> How long have you been doing this work? Maybe one nine years. For a long time, yeah. <laughs> no, that is fantastic. And I also want to thank the previous council because um, of your uh, the way you have managed these budgets and spending. Uh, you know, we have been, I, we are not in a bad shape, but I think we can. We still need to do a better job of um, of estimating our revenues and staying with the budget. And Mayor Andy, thank you for organizing this meeting and bringing us all together so that we're all on one page on this one. This is, this is a really good exercise. And I think what I Don said, doing it a couple of times a year like this will be very helpful. Mm -hmm. And you know, I just wanted to make a comment. It's not going to be the big artful words that Dr. Cora just used. And this is where you always, as a council person, you're always going to hear, I hear walking around Walmart and Myers, oh, the city's got it. The city's got the money. So now you're having a real sit down of what's going on. And you're going to hear it as a council person. Yes. And it's good to have this understanding. I thank you all for putting this on. Um, and I, I can say this, I have had some, some inside information when I asked questions before that would let me know that these things were, you know, not before this, but, you know, in previous years. So I would know, um, you know, what we do and don't have. And it's always been appreciative. And if you have questions, they they're awesome at answering these questions that you can to me love Mary Lynn. So but yeah. the other thing I wanted to ask about here from the mayor and you know is there any uh, private uh, like a, a company or something that can look at our charges for various services compared with uh, Oh, we, we just did that. We're, doing that. We're in the middle of that right now. You're already so that, yeah, so we, we've already received the first run through. So um, now, um, now the departments, our departments are going to look at them. Um, and, and what I think is going to happen, and people are, we have some fees that were established in the 70s, 80s, 90s that have never changed. So. We're looking at um, what fees have never either ever been billed or used, consolidating them, and then creating one ordinance with all of the fees in it so that we have one place to go to so you can see all the fees. Because right now, um, it's, it's many ordinances, you know, that are attached to all these different fees. And I think having like a Bible is going to be the best way to, to do that. 
But um, we've gotten the first run okay. already. Actually, I just got it this week. Okay. Also, we'll be adding credit card fees. Huh? Credit card fees? We're charging for credit card fees. Are we? We should. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We should. I mean, you know, Absolutely. We, we have to get caught up with. You know, today I went to the PM. I went to the PM. And they charged the credit card. Yes, yes they did. Yep. Yeah. And we went to charge the credit card. Yeah. 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 I mean, we want for like bus pass. Yeah, bus pass, not, bus pass not there, but planning, um, um, zoo, admission fees, and stuff like that. Yes. Okay. yes. You can get that 3.5. Yes. So, yeah, so hey, it's what it is. I mean, right now we won't talk about it, but we are going to have to talk about um, the will tax at some point, yeah. um, a food and beverage tax at some point, yeah. and um, a food, the food and beverage tax, several communities are doing it, and that's a way for us to allow tourists to help us pay for parks and stuff in the city. Um, um, it's food and beverage tax, and um, that goes through the state legislature. Um, I did um, talk with our um, legislators about it, and um, I did meet with um, a couple of mayors to discuss what they're doing. Um, those are project specific and, and time constraint. Uh, so basically, if we were to do a food and beverage tax, a $50 meal, you're talking um, 50 cents, right? Um, it's that simple and, and but that's money that can generate you know probably we have to do the math but a million dollars and what a great way for our tourists that come in and spend all their money at our restaurants to help us take care of our parks and in our neighborhood parks i think um the the park department it has to be used for specific things mm -hmm. and and parks and rec and all that is part of it and I think um, we can get it on some type of schedule, you know, come up with a plan and which parks are going to do, put them on the schedule and, and use that money to support mm -hmm. that. So um, um, I'm not versed on the, the, the will tax, but I know that it would generate some money for, our, for us to be able to use um, for, for our operations. So um, those things will come. But food and beverage tax, I just feel like that's a great way for us to <laughs> let other people pay for stuff. Right. <laughs> I agree with that. So, um, I, we can't get, we tried to get on an amendment downstate for this session, but it couldn't get it done. But um, I'll probably come to the council for some type of resolution supporting it in the fall so that when the next session comes, they know that we're in support of something like that. And um, so, more to come on that. Yeah, I just want to thank Mary Lynn to be for putting the program together, introducing us to all the new council people, give an idea of what the budget process is all about. I apologize. <laughs> but our engineer has issues, so I had to stop what yeah. I was doing to take care of him. So you still got the information. Yeah, I, no, I appreciate yeah. it. It is what it is. We got it done. Everybody like, showed like, more educated yeah. about what we're doing here. Yeah. I think we put them in the Because I know when I started, hey, you learn on your own. When you go up to a meeting, you just start trying yeah. to learn. Yeah. So, so, agree with so, so hopefully this was useful for you all. And, yes. um, Thanks. If uh, we're not in the middle of an audit, um, yes, I hope I that we will um, be able to do this sometime June. Right, to get back together and do this again in June to see where we're at. And then after that, um, we'll probably have the training for the budget process. And then we'll start to buy the, uh, the budgeting process, you know, end of July, early August, or whenever we decide to do that. So, but you'll, but this is, this is the difference from previous, prior years. You won't be in the dark when the budget process starts. You know, we, we, our council, we fought on when to start the budget process because we didn't know where we were. I think this will be a little bit different. You'll have a better understanding of where we are. So when we say we're going to start, and we recommend we start in middle of August or end of August, 
you're going to know where we are. It's not like you're going to be sitting there in the blind and, and then it's, you know, back and forth. It's because, hey, we're not ready to present it to you. And we'll give you those reasons. It won't be just because. It'll be a reason. So um, thank you all for coming. It's good to have everybody here. Um, again, if you have any questions, you know to reach out. And uh, meeting adjourned. <laughs>